Hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to take a look at single phase half wave control rectifier with RL load. So let's get started. This is the circuit diagram of a half wave control rectifier with an RL load. We know rectifiers are devices that are used to convert AC to DC. When we say control rectifiers, these are devices which uses thyristors or SCRs that are used to control the power at the output terminals that is across the load. That is why we call these as control rectifiers. When we say half wave control rectifiers, we are employing only one thyristor and we'll be able to control only one half cycle of the power supply that we have supplied. This is basically the simplest explanation with respect to the naming of this particular circuit. It's very clear, I guess. Now we need to understand the operation of how the circuit behaves. So for that, let us consider the waveforms and let us understand the operation with respect to waveforms as well parallelly so that you will have a clear understanding of the circuit operation. So we are basically considering a sinusoidal voltage source which is represented as Vs. And we will be looking at output voltage V out, we will be looking at output current I out, and we will also be looking at the voltage across the thyristor. Now let us consider the circuit diagram back. During positive half cycle, the so voltage source starts increasing, isn't it? As a result, the supply will be plus and minus. Positive is appearing across the anode of T1 and negative is appearing at the cathode of T1. But still the SCR will not be turned on because we are not given the gate supply. So the SCR is in forward blocking mode. When the SCR is in forward blocking mode, it will act as open circuit and there will be no flow of current and there will be no voltage appearing at the load terminals, isn't it? As a result, from this point to this point, in the output voltage and output current, you will be getting zero volts and zero current in this particular fashion. Now, let us say at this instant, I will be applying the gate signal. Basically, I will be applying a small pulse. So what will happen? Let us say this instant is basically alpha, that is the firing angle. The instant at which the SCR moves from forward blocking mode to the point where the SCR starts conducting is called as the firing angle alpha. Very, very important observation. Now, because of the firing angle alpha that is applied, what will happen to thyristor T1? It will act as short circuit. And the current starts flowing through the load and the inductor starts charging and there will be some amount of voltage that is appearing at the load terminal. That is basically the supply voltage itself because whatever we are supplying is appearing at the load terminals here, isn't it? Because this is just a short circuit part and whatever is applied here will be appearing at this terminal. As a result, the source voltage waveform will just follow whatever is applied in this particular fashion. Now the current starts increasing slowly during the cycle. As a result, you're seeing an increased value of current that is flowing through. I hope till this point it is clear. What will be the nature of the thyristor voltage? Initially, when it is in forward blocking mode at zeroth instant, what will happen? The SCR was in forward blocking mode and it was open circuited. When it is open circuited, whatever was applied from VS will be appearing at this terminal, isn't it? As a result, the waveform over here will follow whatever is supplied till this point. And at this instant where firing angle alpha is triggered, what will happen? The SCR was conducting and it will act as short circuit. When it is acting as a short circuit, the voltage across it will be equal to zero, isn't it? As a result, the voltage will go to zero rapidly in this particular fashion. I hope this point is clear. Now, let us see what happens at pi. So this is a very important observation at pi what happens to this particular waveform. At pi the supply voltage will go in the negative direction isn't it? So we will be supplying minus and plus. Usually in the rectifier circuit half wave control rectifier circuit with resistive load in our previous video we saw that when reverse bias is applied or when negative voltage appears uh, is supplied from the source terminals, the SCR was reverse biased, isn't it? But in this case, this will not happen because the amount of energy that is stored in the inductor 
will reverse its polarity. Basically, it was charging its value in the positive direction, that is plus and minus. According to the property of Lin's law, the inductor will reverse its polarity and ensure that the current will be still flow in the same direction that it was flowing previously. So I out will still continue to flow in the same direction and this energy will actually forward bias thyristor S1. So it will still remain in forward bias condition because of the energy that is stored in the inductor. Because the voltage across the inductor will be greater than the voltage across supply. So minus is appearing at the cathode and positive will be appearing across the anode. As a result, the SCR will still be in the forward conduction state. Very, very important observation. So because of this, what will happen? The current will be decaying because the energy stored in the inductor is actually getting discharged. As a result, it slowly starts decreasing after reaching a peak value at pi. At some point, say this is the point where it will decay. Now what will happen to the voltage? The voltage will go in the reverse direction in this particular fashion because the output voltage will basically depend on the supply isn't it it will fall keep following the supply voltage because this is just a short circuit so whatever we are applying will be starting to appear at the output voltage provided there is some drop across the resistor and there will be some amount of energy so applying kvl we will be getting what is the output voltage but the nature of waveform will resemble whatever we are supplying that is vs i hope this point is clear as well so at this instant say equal to beta when the current decays to zero and this is called as beta and it is called as extension angle. That is when the current decays to zero, what will happen is that the next state of operation takes place. That is the SCR will be open circuited at this point. When it is acting as open circuit, what will happen? There will be no flow of current to the load and there will be no current flow. There will be no voltage that is appearing at the load terminal. As a result, you'll be getting zero voltage and zero current in this particular fashion over here. Whereas the voltage across the thyristor now will follow the supply voltage in the negative direction. Why is that? Because the supply was still negative at this point minus n plus at beta and because of that minus n plus whatever is supplied will be appearing at this point and as a result it is open circuited it will follow the voltage that is supplied. So this waveform will follow here and this cycle repeats the same thing happens during the next cycle as well. Again, I will be applying a gate pulse at this point and based on that, the nature repeats. So now we are going to look at the analysis part where we'll be deriving uh, the expressions for a few parameters and they are very important to solve numericals. The first one being the average output voltage V out. V out is basically given by one by total time period that is two pi in this case, integration of alpha to beta alpha is the point where the scr is turned on and we are con considering till beta because that is the point where the current decays to zero after that the voltage will anyways be equal to zero and that is why we are considering till beta so we will be having vm sin omega t into d omega t now why we are using vm sin omega t here because from the definition, it should be V out dt, but V out is equal to Vm sin omega t, isn't it? Because whatever we are supplying will appear at the load terminal. So that is why V out we are considering V out is equal to Vs and Vs is equal to Vm sin omega t. I hope this point is clear. Now V out is equal to let us take Vm outside. So we will be left out with Vm by 2 pi into integrating this, we will be getting minus cos omega t from alpha to beta. Further simplifying this, we will be left out with Vm by 2 pi into cos alpha minus cos beta. Isn't it? Very important relation to solve numericals. Now, let's look at the RMS value of output voltage. RMS value of output voltage is given by square root of 1 by total time period by the fundamental definition and we will be retaining alpha to beta vm square sine square omega t into d omega t v out rms can be further simplified as square root of vm square 
by 2 pi into integration of alpha to beta can we write sin square omega t as 1 minus cos 2 omega t whole divided by 2 into d omega t now further we will be integrating this particular expression so let us write pm square by 2 pi as it is and integrating this we will be getting omega t by 2 minus sin 2 omega t by 4 that is by chain rule with the limits alpha to beta now we will be having v out rms is equal to square root of pm square by 2 pi into integration that is upper limit b2 by beta by 2 minus sin 2 beta by 4 minus the lower limit that is alpha by 2 minus of minus will be plus that is the lower limit sin 2 alpha by 2 isn't it and this will be in bracket now v out rms is equal to square root of pm square by 2 pi and taking 1 by 2 common throughout this expression will be left out with beta minus let us consider alpha this side and you will be left out with plus sine 2 alpha minus sine 2 beta by 2 isn't it so make a small correction here this should be 4 in the denominator not 2 Now we'll be left out with V out RMS is equal to Vm by 2 root pi taking Vm outside the root and 2 into 2 will be 4 and root of it will be equal to 2 into root 2 root pi. You'll be writing this expression as it is that is beta minus alpha plus 1 by 2 into sin 2 alpha minus sin 2 beta. whole power root this is the rms value of output voltage now what is the peak inverse voltage peak inverse voltage is the maximum voltage that is appearing at the thyristor during negative half cycle if you carefully observe the maximum peak voltage in the negative cycle was vm isn't it so it will be vm what is the circuit turn off time in the waveform the circuit turn off time is basically the turn off time or the time in which the thyristor is turned off it was turned off for a duration 2 pi minus beta whole divided by omega that is with respect to time axis we will be considering the duration is basically 2 pi minus beta equal to omega t and rewriting this we will be getting this it's very simple what will be the input power factor input power factor is basically given by P out RMS, I out RMS, whole divided by Vs into Is. Since same current is flowing from the source to the load, I out RMS and Is will be the same. So this gets cancelled out. Vs is basically Vm by root 2. So substituting and solving this expression will be left out with 1 by root 2 pi into beta minus alpha plus 1 by 2 sine 2 alpha minus sine 2 beta whole power root i hope this point is also clear so these are the important derivations that are very much important for solving numericals in case you have any questions feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below thanks for watching stay tuned Thank you.